You may remember a news conference just before Christmas featuring an economist from the New School and the treasurers of both Connecticut and Vermont together to endorse a new proposal here to fight generational poverty. Now, Connecticut was the first state to establish baby bonds for kids born into low-income families. Well, Vermont State Treasurer says he's determined to get enabling legislation passed in Montpelier this session as well. We invited them both in to tell us more. Mike Pichak, Eric Russell, welcome to NBC5. Yeah, thanks for having us, Stuart. Happy to be here. Great to, great to have you. Um, Eric, you're the new state treasurer in Connecticut. That's correct. Uh, up here at uh, Mike's invitation as the state treasurer of Vermont. Mike, let's start with you. Your second legislative initiative is going to be um, the establishment of what you call baby bonds. Um, and Connecticut has uh, some experience with this, so I wanted to get each of your perspectives. First, w where did this idea come from, Mike? Uh, why, why would it work here? Yeah, well, I think if you think about the three goals of the program, the first is combating generational poverty. The other is rural economic development. And the last is trying to retain young people in Vermont. So I think on each one of those prongs, that is something Vermont needs to tackle uh, going forward to building a strong and sustainable economy. So I think the mission of the program is something that really resonated with me um, and why we went forward with it. It's really a conversation I had with Eric about a year ago, uh, hearing about Connecticut's success, hearing about the excitement around the program, what the proceeds could be used for. It sounded like something that would really work well in Vermont and have a broad base of support. This is a publicly funded bond program for all newborns? So it would be limited to those newborns born on Medicaid. So it's really the most vulnerable children, uh, the most impoverished families in Vermont, making sure that we're trying to level the playing field so that they also have an opportunity for economic success. You know, not having that, you know, 12000 to $24,000 sort of head start that maybe a parent or a grandparent or a relative uh, provided to you to start a business, buy a home, go to school, you know, that really holds families back and it really creates the cycle of poverty that unfortunately we've seen in Vermont and across the country. So it's trying to drive right at that issue and try to break that cycle by giving resources to individuals to make choices for themselves about what their own futures hold. Eric, how does the program work in Connecticut? It's still pretty new, but uh, how, how is it structured? Very similarly to the proposal here in Vermont uh, and with Mike. And so in Connecticut, for every child born into poverty, which we also use the state's Medicaid uh, program as the indicator of that poverty line. Uh, there'll be $3,200 that's invested in a trust on behalf of those children, and it grows over the life of that child. The money's invested in my office in the Treasury, and when individuals are between the ages of 18 and 30, they can access those resources for purposes that are all around creating wealth over time. So they can use it to purchase a home in Connecticut, to start or invest in a Connecticut business, to help pay for post-secondary education or job training, or to roll into a retirement savings account. And the idea here is that we know the biggest indicator of someone's ability to build wealth over time is having some capital to start with. That's really the focus of this program. Where does the money come from? So in Connecticut, uh, the proposal was initially that the funding would come from bonding, that we would bond $50 million a year uh, over a 12-year window, so a total of $600 million to fund the program. Uh, we have about 15,000 uh, babies born uh, on Medicaid every year in Connecticut. What we ended up doing was looking at a host of different funding mechanisms and through a lot of collaboration and diligence, we were actually able to use money that we had held in a reserve account. We were able to free that money up and fully fund the program up front for 12 years. How do we, there, there is some uh, analysis from uh, a colleague of yours at the New School uh, in New York about how effective this, this could be. You're the, the Connecticut's the first state to actually uh, go forward. That's right. So what, what does the analysis suggest? Uh, how do we know this will work? So again, the research I think shows, again, having some access to capital is how folks have built wealth over time. If you think about most people in Connecticut and across the country have built wealth over time through assets that appreciate without them having to do anything, right? Owning a home. Um, so what this program does is provide some of that seed capital for individuals to make decisions around something that can help them, help them build wealth. But it's ultimately about, it's a piece of a much larger puzzle as we look to address generational poverty. Um, in Connecticut, we are one of the wealthiest states in the country, but we have one of the largest wealth gaps. And it's a wealth gap that's continued to widen over time. 
this is a piece of the puzzle as we continue to invest in childcare and education and more affordable housing in our state, but to really try to level the playing field and create economic opportunity um, and a path for people to lift themselves up in a more meaningful way. Uh, would that $3,200 be what you're aiming for here? Mike? Yeah, that's exactly right, Stuart. So $3,200 invested, they can claim the baby bond between the ages of 18 and 30. Mm -hmm. um, at age 18, we estimate that that would be about $11,500 to $12,000. At age 30, it'd be more closer to uh, $24,000. Uh, we have fewer babies born in Vermont on Medicaid compared to Connecticut. So we have about 2,000 babies a year in Vermont. So the price tag for our program is about $6.4 million annually. Um, so that's something that um, we have a proposal to cover from uh, Treasurer's Office funds, actually from the unclaimed property fund that sends a direct transfer uh, to the general fund every single year. Um, it's a hard amount to budget for, uh, but it's a perfect source for something like this, which is a long-term investment. Um, so that's our proposal in terms of how to cover the cost. The money would be invested, I mean, how... Uh I mean, you want it to grow, but you want to make sure that it's there. Yes, exactly. So, you know, this is a long-term investment. So I think particularly early on, you'll be investing in a more aggressive way to try to get those returns. They get as much money back into the pool so that you can pay out uh, as much in those baby bonds when the individuals turn 18 years old. Now, when you get closer to when you might start making payments, I think you might have to evaluate the portfolio and incorporate some of that more conservative investment strategy. Um, but at least early on, I think um, it's pretty clear that we're going to want to be investing these funds for long-term economic gain. Is there any thought that I mean, you spoke about the low birth rate in Vermont and its uh, historic lows right now, that this could have some impact? Uh, we need more kids. We need more people, as, as all Vermont policymakers like to, like to remind us. Uh, could this have any effect on uh, raising the birth rate, do you think, this idea? Well, I think one thing it will certainly do, it's one of the prongs of the of the goal, is to retain young people in Vermont. You have to be a Vermont resident to claim the baby bond. And then uh, to, build, to buy a house or to start a business, those are activities that have to happen in Vermont. So I think um, those babies that are being born in Vermont, uh, the hope is that we will retain them here at a higher rate than we uh, normally are now. Uh, potentially could also uh, increase the rate of uh, births. But I think also we have to think about that holistically. As Eric said, how do we support young families in Vermont? It has to be uh, programs beyond uh, the baby bonds program like child care and affordable housing and, and uh, health care as well. This thing sailed through uh, at the state capitol, Eric? It took a lot of time and a lot of collaboration. It was challenging because I think, um, you know, anytime you're looking at a long-term investment, a long-term program like this, it takes a lot of political courage from folks that are involved who may not reap the benefit of uh, these investments in the short term. Uh, frankly, I am not likely to be in office when the ultimate payout for much of these proceeds is going to be um, actually received by recipients. Um, at the same time, I think we have to take a much more measured approach to what we're doing. We have to make investments in people and in our communities now, but we also need to really think about the future that we want to build in Connecticut and across the country. What kind of uh, reaction are you getting so far, Mike? Yeah, so far it's been uh, highly favorable. You know, we've had great conversations with uh, individual legislators, uh, with the governor's office, with business owners, with stakeholders. And, you know, there's something I think for um, everyone to like, you know, I think this is sort of a, a progressive policy on the one hand, when you're talking about attacking uh, generational poverty. I think there's something also for more conservative individuals to like when you're talking about investing in communities uh, that have not been invested in, like our rural communities, since there's a disproportionate number of babies born on Medicaid in those communities. So it's something that we hope to get broad appeal uh, and bipartisan support. Uh, before we run, your first uh, legislative um, achievement last year, uh, creation of these automatic uh, retirement savings plans through the Treasurer's Office, that's about to launch, is that right? Yeah, so we um, are on the verge in 2024 of, of launching that program. At the moment, we're ahead of schedule and under budget for launching it. Uh, we weren't scheduled initially to launch until uh, July of 2025. Um, but we will be announcing in early 2024 a state partnership. Uh, we've sent out uh, RFP to try to partner with a number of states around the country. We'll select one. Um, and through that process, we're able to set up the program more quickly uh, and more efficiently. Uh, so be on the lookout for that in early 2024 and uh, hopefully a revised timeline. We're asking the legislature to give us flexibility so that we can actually set the program up earlier. 
Well, we look forward to hearing uh, more about that. But uh, for now, baby bonds with the two money men from Vermont <laughs> and Connecticut. Thanks very much for being here. Pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Stuart. Baby bonds co-sponsors already include Keisha Rahm Hinsdale. She chairs the Senate Committee on Economic Development. I am just really proud to stand with the treasurer and the esteemed guests from all over the country and the state to launch this program and to get it done this year in the legislature. Something to give you your own capital, your own foundation when you come of age is, is life changing for so many people and does have a huge generational impact. It's one of many issues we'll be watching in the second half of the biennium. We'll be right back.